This is the Grandezza 37CA. Grandezza is a name you've probably heard of, but don't know an awful lot about. The boats are built in Finland by Finmaster, and the 37CA is the current flagship. It's just shy of 38 feet long, and has a pair of Volvo Penta D4300s on stern drives. And the price? A whisker under £450,000. On a glorious day in pool, it was time to get behind the wheel and put it to the test. Instant punch from these twin 300s. Really effortless up onto the plane, already up at 20 knots. And this boat's got a zip wake interceptor system fitted, which means really you don't have to think about trimming the boat at all. Of course you've got leg trim, but that also has auto trim, which means that helming this thing at speed, okay, it's very calm day today, it's very, very easy. The boat is doing all the thinking for you. All you have to do is set the speed,
get the angle quite right on with this boat. Still, we're crossing the wash here at 25 knots, and it's absolutely fine. Genuinely quite enjoyable. And it's so agile, you can swish from side to side so quickly. boat that was designed with single-handed skippering in mind, hence why you, you have the door, you can get out onto the side deck really easily. It would be nice if there was a boarding gate here actually, so you could go from the helm seat straight onto the pontoon, but well, they haven't managed to include one of those though, because you've got asymmetric decks, the port one is, is narrower than the starboard one, it is a really good size and a very easy deck to move up and down on. And it's a very easy boat to handle at slow speed. As I said, the joystick's an option you probably don't need. I, I really don't see the benefit of them really on stern drives. IPS pods, different matter. I think you have so much great control with these twin stern drives, especially these DPI drives. The gearboxes are much smoother in and out of gear. That really, with the two engines and a powerful slight bow thruster, there's, there's very little you can't do. Um, and I'm, I've got crew today, but I feel reasonably confident in, in, in calm conditions like this to bring this boat in on my own and do the lines and be quite comfortable doing that. But you just have so much manoeuvrability with uh, this setup here. So what I like about stern drives is that they're great out of the water, that agility really is addictive. But then when it comes to doing this stuff, because you have such great manoeuvrability, they're good at that as well. Now at just under £450,000 it is not a cheap boat but you can see where the money's going. It's very thoughtfully designed. It's got that typical Scandinavian practical flair and that starts right back here where for example you've got dedicated storage space for your fenders. And there's another lock on the other side which has got dedicated space for the mooring lines. Very nifty. Then moving into the cockpit, the first thing you notice is that the decks are asymmetric. So the starboard one is wider and deeper than the one on the port side. The port side one is still usable. You can still use it to crew and hang fenders, but it's narrower and it's higher. Whereas this one sinks down and it lines up with the side door, as we'll see in a moment. Going back to the cockpit overhead, you have a sunroof here. Really nice way of letting the sun shine in if it's a daylight today. But of course you can put canopies around this whole perimeter here, close that, and you've got another sheltered seating area aside from the main saloon. And if you notice, both tables are on electronic high-low legs, so you can adjust the height of them at the touch of a button, which is quite useful. Engine access is beneath this hatch here. Again, it's electronic, you press a button, hatch comes right up, and you've got really good access to the two diesel engines. And this is a very nifty practical feature. You've got a huge storage space underneath the saloon floor. Very easy to access, could probably do with another ram to be honest, because that's quite a heavy lid. But there's space there for storing food, kit, whatever you want. Really nice big space, it's very easy to access. You talk about the little touches on this boat that you notice, the see the quality, where the money's going. And it's things like this, that simple as to get to this storage void, all you do is lift that cushion. The cushion is mounted directly onto the hinges here with a gas ram. You don't have to fiddle about with lifting off cushions and lifting off lids. It's one piece, very simple and easy to get to those storage voids. Other things, you've got a Wallace induction grill. You've even got a Dometic extractor fan overhead. Sort of things you don't really expect on a 37 foot sports cruiser. Loads and loads of storage here in the galley. And the fact that you've got built in cutlery slots they really have gone to town on the storage it's absolutely everywhere you've got a nice fridge under the counter here not huge but it'll do the job and then you've just got plain counter space which is always useful for prepping food making drinks microwave down here and they've even gone to the trouble of putting a dometic pull out cool box underneath the helm here 
The helm seat is smart as well. You can bolster it like this. You can flip this down. Very comfortable position to sit and drive. You have an adjustable steering wheel. You can adjust the angle of the wheel as well. You can flip that up so you can bolster. There's a flip down section here. And with that down, even shorter skippers will be able to poke their head up over the sunroof and look out forward over the bow. It's a boat that's designed to be used all year round, hence why it's so handy to have the sunroof. You can open it up on a day like this, or if you want to go boat in the middle of the winter, you close that, you shut the side door, you close the aft doors, and you can go out whatever the weather. And I like the fact that you have two navigator seats here facing forward. So you've only got a single helm seat, but at least people can join you face forward, enjoy the journey, and they've got plenty of storage, places to put their phones, etc. A couple of cup holders, a charger over there, and this area here is a great place to store paper charts if people still do that sort of thing. Moving out onto the foredeck, this is where I quite like to see a boarding gate. That would make crewing even easier. You just step straight from the helm seat down onto the pontoon. As it stands, you have to go down to the transom and get off that way, but it's not a major issue. You're up these steps, and what's quite nice is that as well as the standard sun pad, the sort of thing you expect on a boat of this size, they've got this little bench here with a footwell as well. Makes it that bit more comfortable, that bit more usable. Very nice place to sit on anchor. If you're pottering along at sort of six to ten knots, this would be a very nice place to sit and watch the world go by. And that attention to detail extends right here to the bow. I mean, look at the gauge of these cleats. Really, really solid, a good size, nicely finished. And then if you lift up the anchor hatch, you notice the chain is nicely separated off. You have the windlass here, you have a through hull mount for the bow roller, and you have a little hook here so that you can line ropes up in there and they're not gonna drop down into the storage area itself. And then you have fresh water up here if you wanna wash off this area. Say if you're moored in the Mediterranean, you've got lazy lines up from the seabed and this area gets filthy, you can hose off from here. This is something that's always quite nice to see. You've got the fuel filler cap and the waste water and a drain all here under this flap under the side deck. Anything spills out from over here, it's not going on the side decks, it's going into that drain and into the bilge. Very smart. Securing these cushions isn't done by cheap Velcro or nasty plastic poppers. You've got proper metal sockets which are magnetized so they find their own way home there they are, in place, very slick. Now if we move down here, we get to the accommodation space. Move right forward and you find the master cabin. And there's more smart design here as well, because you can see you've got split doors here. So the doors split in half and then fold back against the bulkhead. Really opens up this area nicely. You just want to watch your foot on this ledge down here. It can be far too easy to, to catch your toe there. The bed is set quite high, however, you have got steps up either side, so it's quite easy to get up into bed. And natural light is pretty good as well. These windows are tinted, you see the porthole isn't. You've got some natural ventilation through there, and they're not huge, but it helps. And of course, you've got the hatch overhead and escape hatch, and also that gives you some ventilation and some more light. You've got a small cupboard in here, a bit of storage, and then actually you've got another larger locker just outside in this little entrance hall and that's got hanging space so you can hang some clothes up in there to supplement the little cupboard inside the cabin itself and it's the little touches again that you notice on this boat so you have fiddle edging around this shelf here so you don't have to worry about things sliding off when the boat's going along this section here you notice that both sides of the bed you have usb so people can charge their tablet or smartphone you've got a cup holder you've got a little pad here where you could put jewelry or a mobile phone and you have reading lights up there by the head of the bed. Now if we head aft, amidships, you find the guest cabin, which has got perfectly good headroom here in the entrance way, where you'd probably get changed. Obviously it dips down a bit where the beds are, but it's fine to stand up here. You've got storage in the guise of double wardrobe shelving area here. And it's a quite a clever layout because it looks like two singles here, two single beds, but this backrest simply poppers off using Velcro. You put that down the middle there and then you have a huge 
double bed. Makes it quite versatile. If you've got a couple, they can have a double. If you've got people who aren't a couple, then they can use two singles. Quite good for kids. It's quite a clever use of the space. And that really does sum this boat up. Clever use of space. Big storage void down there. There's a big storage void there. Even this little cupboard here, which most manufacturers wouldn't even bother with. It's got a door on it and you've got a bit more storage. You've got a little porthole in here and an opening section as well. And quite nice that you've got a proper reading light up at the top of the bed there. And you've got some nice down, light, down lighters over that side. And I quite like this, the recessed lighting as well. It's quite a classy glow in this cabin. And then moving to starboard, you have the shared bathroom. It's a good size, it's well finished. The standard in here is just as good as the rest of the boat. You've got the same level of wood. You've got really nice bathroom wear here, lovely sink. And you have a separate shower cubicle. You don't have a horrible cheap shower curtain sticking to you when you shower. You've got a proper separate cubicle with a little seat, finished in teak. Okay, you have to share this bathroom with your guests, but it's a nice enough size. And again, storage is pretty good. It's natural to compare the Grand Desert to the Bavarias, Benetos and Galleons of this world, but in reality it's more of a rival to the likes of the Marex 360 and the Nimbus 365 Coupe. In fact, with the Brits and Italians all but abandoning this sector, if it's a high quality sports cruiser of these dimensions you want, the Grand Desert makes an excellent case for itself.